Yo, what are you doing right now? We are going to get real about men's issues, who Jesus is, and who we are as men in Christ. We're going to hear Trey, Jeremy, Michael, and Brad break it down. These guys call themselves the Cussin' Christians. All right, guys, what is going on? I saw something interesting. It's a van that said Southern Cremations. Have you ever seen that? No. What's a Southern Cremation? Yeah, that's what I, well, it's a company. Deep yeah, that's what I'm what is it? Smothered and covered, and your <laughs> right. whole family sits around the furnace and watches you burn, you know, like a fire pit? Yeah. Ew. Southern Barbecue. Cream. You're smothered and covered. <laughs> smothered and covered. Oh, Southern I cremation. I used to love going to Waffle House. Oh, man. Know, stack cap, you know, all that, whatever. Yeah, they, smothered, covered, and there's one at, <laughs> smothered, covered, and something else. Uh, uh, whatever the jalapeno is. Oh, the, it's so good. It was, the, it was the talk of the town in my hometown. We finally got a uh, Waffle House there. Was it by the interstate? Man, you live in a large city. Oh, yeah. <laughs> aren't you, aren't, well, I told you that in high school, the... Um, our rival used to put a sign up that says, we've got a Walmart, what do you have? And uh, then w- when we got a super Walmart, they put the sign up and said, we have a super Walmart. Nice. <laughs> like, what do you have? Take, oh, take yeah. that. When the Flying J came in, it was like, man, we were shitting hot cotton. <laughs> oh, flying J. The Flying J. Oh, yeah. There was, there's a line out the door. How big was your high school? How many how many students? Like, just your graduating class, how many yeah, were there? About 100. That's it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mine was a little bigger than that. 640 for me. Wow. 640? Wow. That's pretty big. Mm-hmm. No. 108 for me, but it was a Christian school. A little Christian yeah. school. Mine was the whole county. That's pretty big for a Christian school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was a good class. Man. <laughs> there was... Uh, I saw you guys dancing up there. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, the dance king. Yeah. Putting on the hits, on the Mr. Hits. Graber. We gotta put, we gotta find a way to put that on the website. Let everybody That's see hilarious. your skills. Brad Graber, eighteen. Eighteen. Brad Graber, eighteen. <laughs> two hey, days. And your voice sounds the same. Two days before we got kicked out in Hollywood. That's Hollywood. right. Kicked out to the streets. Yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all had to pack it up and leave. All that damage you were doing, you, you Christian guys, make, yeah. making too much noise. I don't know. I don't know if all of us were Christian back then. In yeah. the yeah. Navy. <laughs> <laughs> what a I, I video. Was, <laughs> Those, those songs, those, those like days and songs that like were out there. One Hit Wonders. Well, in the Navy, even YMCA. YMCA. All those songs just like. But it hasn't lost. I mean, still they're popular. still getting paid for it. Silly songs. Mm-hmm. I feel like most, I don't know, at least the rock songs nowadays are a lot more serious. You know, like nobody will ever write another Beautiful Girls song like Van Halen did. Ah, uh, yeah. Everything now is so serious, man. It's all. It's all indie dark. bands, too. Is, is there any rock bands anymore? Oh, yeah, dude. There's, there's, there's a is ton there? of. Hard rock metal bands, but everything's serious. It's hmm. over, over. Everybody's got a message. Yeah, right. It's like the 60s. It's not just fun anymore. You know, country music started all that off because, you know, 30, 40 years of going to lose my woman and my dog and my truck and mm-hmm. all those things. And now rock and roll and uh, uh, metal and stuff have finally caught up with serious messaging right. in the song. Is it true when you play a country music album backwards, you get your dog back, yeah. you get your truck back, you get your woman back? <laughs> I am testimony Excellent. to that. Mm. Uh, we we had a, um, without giving up too much, we had a um, a great sermon yesterday at our church. And it just made me start thinking um, about the world we live in and how we adjust. And looking at Paul's writings and how he has to continue to go back and remind these churches that he's visited who they are. And the book of Romans is the gospel broken out amongst a lot of chapters and each chapter has a purpose and you can feel him looking and getting people to look deeper about these problems that we go through today those worldly things that we're infiltrated with today the world was infiltrated with them when paul was writing oh yeah and they're tough words in romans chapter one and my question to you guys to get us rolling today is does the typical christian i I just do we say i love jesus to keep me out of hell but do we really dive deeper 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 into why we are bound for it Hmm. yeah I, i think unfortunately i think there's a lot of people who say they're a christian that are not truly saved 
Mm-hmm. It's more of a they, they walk the act out versus living the life out. Right. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a pastor in my church that said, I wish everybody in my church was a Christian. Yeah. And it, that hit me hard. I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. I come to the church every week and I'm doing all the right stuff and doing all these things. I was in that mm. in that works based mm-hmm. thing. And this 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 fall of man thing, do we truly grasp what happened that day? Uh, that you know that that Adam and Eve took the bite and the perpetual uh, damnation that we were that was sealed for us until Jesus came and we believe do we do we get it I think there's so many people out there who don't I don't know either they've heard a little bit here and there but they haven't really read the word and they're not really educated so they just say I don't know I think that's why so many people identify as Christians who really aren't because they think if they're born in America or if they go to the church that makes them a Christian but they really don't understand what that means they haven't been taught yeah what it means and uh, uh, yesterday, our pastor said something about uh, it was you it, know, but you don't know because you didn't want to know. Don't want to know. Yeah, I run into that a lot. A lot of people that just don't want to know, and then when you tell them, then they don't have an excuse anymore. Hmm. And then it's like you see it in their face. They're like, "Why did you tell me that? Like, I didn't want to know that. Like, I, I liked what I believed. Like, well, that's great. You liked what you believe. I like what I believe too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because now but you're responsible. Once you once you know once the truth, you know, you know. It's like yeah. you you got to act on it. Right. Mm-hmm. But one of the scriptures he used yesterday was Romans one eighteen through twenty. Uh, the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. So it's like they already know. I mean, there's there's truth. They're suppressing it by you know the things they do and just not wanting to give in. Uh, since what may be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that people are without excuse. So it's like God's heart. You know, we 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 talk about how He's hardwired us to know that there's a God and, and to want to, you know, we fill the void with, with everything else. Right. And you, you look in nature, you look in, you know, if you really stop and think about the universe, you think about the miracle of life, you think about all these things that we've talked about, you know, the, the, mm-hmm. the axis of the earth. And if it was 1% different, we'd all burn up. Mm-hmm. It's like, there are signs everywhere that there's a God, that there's a creator, but we suppress the truth right. because of our wickedness and, and people don't, they don't want to know. Some people are comfortable in their sin. The truth that sets us free is the same truth that will set anybody free if they just ask. And so I don't understand why people wouldn't want to have that relationship or want to have that that unbelievable truth inside of them because it is very easy. It's so easy to just ask. It's so simple. Christ made it that way. But why? And we know that people are going to go to hell because they choose wickedness over truth i just i grieve sometimes and i'm i grieve for people and i guess that's the holy spirit in me who's also grieving for people and that's his role is to that none should perish but i don't know i don't understand the whole agenda in that way i i don't i don't get it well all of us we we kind of had that light bulb moment at different points in our life for me it was you know when i was 20 years old and my girlfriend was pregnant and my world was falling apart. That's and, and I knew I was a Christian. At, you know, up to that point, I was a Christian, but I was kind of holding God over here. Like, like, yeah, I'll get, I'll get to you later. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm doing, I'm just kind of living my life now, doing this thing. But it's like when life became really serious, all of a sudden, I was like, okay, I need, I need Him now. Like, I need to turn to Him now. So why did it take us so long? You know, mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, some of you guys were were later in life right. before you really turned, and so you're saying, I don't know why people wouldn't want, you know, to have that peace. Well, we all. I don't know. It's like we either we needed to get to that that moment of crisis to where we were desperate enough to call out to him. And it's, you know, it's his mercy that we even did that. Right. Because a lot of people don't. They just they go the other way. Our pastor yesterday said something very profound um, about as we're working through the book of Romans, that there's a lot of commentary. Yeah, but this was. 50, 60, 70 AD when Paul wrote this stuff and the culture today is totally different. And you hear stuff like that a lot. Mm. And and you're going, no, no, no. They they had problems with what all these oh, yeah. things in this world then. Sure. I mean, obviously you've never read Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. 
mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Obviously, you haven't you know read about how uh, the agony that David was in for committing adultery and murder. Mm-hmm. All of these things that we have today from murder and slavery and and porn and homosexuality, all those sins are addressed in Levitical law, 613 of them in -hmm. in there. And we're in a culture now where we just say, you know what? They call it the Christian buffet line, right? Uh, Okay, I'm not going to murder anybody, so that's cool. I agree with that one. But, you know, that sex outside of wedlock doesn't really apply to me type of deal. And I'm speaking from... I'm speaking from experience on that, mm-hmm. right? And when do we finally say this is the whole truth and nothing but the truth here? And God's grace was given to us because of all those things we were so hopeless with. We have a way now that we have hope. I think sin's addicting. I think it's a. It's, it feels good. It, yeah, I mean, you get it, that. Or, and it gets you out of it gets you out of trouble sometimes. Yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, I mean, you get that dopamine rush, right? It's just like your coffee you have in front of you right now. I mean, you you like it. You wake up in the morning, you got to have it, right? It's culturally, we've just gone to a place where it's like, hey, you know, we'll just do our thing. And I think it's we were talking about earlier, like we don't want to work for the man, right? Like that's the new thing. Whereas at least uh, young I, people, yeah. At least back when you know biblical times, when these guys are writing the Bible, like you know, even society had a little bit more of a grip on what was acceptable and not acceptable, right? But mm-hmm. it doesn't mean they didn't struggle with it. But like now, it's to a place where it's like openly okay to go against, and it's almost like like you should go against it, right? Like you should go against what the man says. You should go against what the Bible says. You know, all these Christians, they're just crazy because they don't want to go out and do these these fun things like the world gave us these things we should do those things well the world didn't give us those things we actually turned away from god (laughs) that gave us those things Mm -hmm. um and and dopamine's good right like we're supposed to have dopamine we're supposed to feel good but we're supposed to use it in the right way and unfortunately you know a lot of sin claws at that dopamine then you do it again and by the way it doesn't feel as good the next time no and then you have to do twice as much. Yep. Then you have to do twice as much. Then you yep. have to do twice as much. And then right. eventually it becomes an issue. And it's just like any other addictive substance. Like, that's how it works. I mean. Mm-hmm. Satan's playbook hasn't changed. No. It's the same. It's to, how else can he get back at God other than for his children to to sin? Yeah. That's his only way to get back at God. I think one, I was going to say, you know, giving in to sin is kind of like scratching a rash or something. If, mm-hmm. You know, it, it, it itches. You know it's there. And it's like, man, I'm just going to do this just a little bit. I'm just, just a little bit of scratching. Before you know it. And so it's, so, it's so much worse, you know, later on. It just right. makes the whole thing worse. And it's the same thing giving in to sin. It's just like, just I'm just going to do it a little bit so that I'm not yeah. thinking about it. So it relieves some pressure or whatever. And then, you know, it just gets worse and worse. How many times do we keep going back to that sin and then, like me, raise my hand, I start screaming out and blaming God for the for the predicament I'm in. Why'd you let me do this? Yeah, and and he address and, and Paul addresses that in chapter 24 of the first chapter of Romans. Therefore, God gave them up in the lust of their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies amongst themselves, because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie, mm-hmm. and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. He just, he'll allow it. And that's kind of a way, I mean, he can give wrath all day long if he wants. That's, he's God. But that's also another way for him to let the wrath happen to you because the ripple effect of sin and a clean pond with a, with a stone thrown in it. And, you know, what, what we do and what we get caught up in and we turn our head and we do anyway, sooner or later, it's going to come back and bite us in the mm-hmm. butt, man. Yeah, sooner there's, or later. there's a lot of people out there that have been given over to a depraved mind. Right. There are things going on today that 20, even 20 years ago, you'd be like, what? People are going to be doing what? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and it's scary when God gives you over to your own depraved mind. That's you know what we're seeing today. That's, that's how bad it can get. Right. 10 years ago, would we be talking today about men, uh, women with penises? Would that even be a subject? Or, or men becoming pregnant? Would right. there be an emoji on my phone of a pregnant man? Because <laughs> yeah. there is. If you have an iPhone, it's there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or, yeah, it's like. Well, or what about, I mean we keep getting stuck on that subject is so prevalent, but what about the people that celebrate drugs? Yeah. You know I mean, there's a, like I said, there's a guy on TikTok right now that, you know, talks about all the different mushrooms and different drugs he does and celebrates it. Like it's an okay thing and everybody can handle it and you can't right. In the fifties, you'd watch TV. It's 
Leave it to Beaver and all these things. And then now you've got butt cheeks flashing and boobs flashing on regular television oh, and, yeah. and small bits. I mean, we have we have gone from... Uh, the censors that used to say, no, you can't say you that. You can't say that. Dick Van Dyke show, they couldn't sleep together. They were in two beds. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why they were in two beds? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because the TV wouldn't the even censors, let them. Yeah. Right. Wow. <laughs> but, but no, we, we just evolved to the commercials on TV and everything else uh, from a television perspective. It's the stuff you have to p used to pay HBO to see. You can just see it in right. full on. Well, and the HBO stuff is even further. And right? the HBO stuff is even further now. Yeah. yeah. And it's crazy. That's how Satan works. He just does a little by little by little the long game. I'm going to get to your kids. You're not even going to know it. Mm. And then you're going to accept it. You know, there's a rising number of people um, in the millennial age group, which is my age group, you know, and down that are choosing not to have children now. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like that's part of God's, you know, the, like people are literally saying, hey, I don't want to be a part of this, but I can't leave it either. So, you know, they're choosing not to have children, which also is not what God told us to do. Be um, fruitful and multiply. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a, I think it's an instinctual thing we're seeing across the world that, you know, you know, it's don't have more kids in this craziness. Right. Yeah. You know, we just announced last week that this big event in Gainesville mm -hmm. and the, you know, bringing uh, Tebow and Zach Williams together at the university for a college experience. And uh, I know we had issues when we were in high school. We we had rebellious stages and everything else and, and things where we went off track sometimes. Mm -hmm. and, well, and, and then we fought with our fists, too. There was Right. We weren't packing heat. Right. Right. More and more times I sit down with somebody... It's not about, man, I'm, I'm going to the porn screen. Man, I'm drinking too much. Man, I got problems. There's more and more of, I don't know what to do about my 15-year-old in constant depression, and she's starting to cut herself. I don't know what to do or how to handle uh, my 14-year-old that's isolating and just staying in the bedroom mm -hmm. uh, you know, all day long and not doing anything. There's so much concern amongst our children and then with the statistic of two thirds of kids that grew up in the church walking away from the church, and and the icing on the cake was the brother that said, "My baby girl, she was you know she was my beautiful baby girl, and was our little choir singer, and did all these things. She looked so cute in her Easter dresses on Sunday Easter Sunday, and she came back from college after one semester tray and said, I can't call I can't call her a she anymore.'" I know we had struggles when we were young young men. I know we sure. But it just seems like there's this mental psychological battle now for our kids' minds mm. that's really bothering me. And and my son's past all that. He's 30, 31 years old, right? But you got the ones coming up, mm. bro, and I'm you just got you got to have a, a armor all over you and surrounding them with it. It's it's tough. I mean, listen, the, the, we have questions that come into our house that we don't want i mean for sure um you know it's it, and we have to have those conversations you know and um you know we try to teach them to accept people and love people for being people but not to accept what they do and not what they do is okay right like there's a lot of those conversations like hey you know what like we that's not acceptable right like that's not the way it's supposed to be you know let's you know and i think you know that's the that's really all you can do, right? And just let them know they have some place to come and talk and have those questions and make sure that they can ask them. But they're asking them at a very early age. Right, yeah. um, you know, and a, a lot of it does have to do around sexuality and a lot of those conversations because they see it and they're like, well, so and so has two mommies, so and so has two daddies, you know. You know, their parents, you know, so-and-so has two houses. Like, why don't we have two houses? Well, because mommy and daddy are supposed to be in the same house. Like, mm. but it's okay that they're not, right? Like, they're doing what they think's best. But we, I mean, we had that conversation last night about divorce. You know, you have to be able, ready to do it and have that conversation. You got to have it in the moment, too. You can't put that one on delay, right? right. It's like, right. You know, we, at the dinner table last night, we had the conversation about divorce. Wow. Well, so. It's good that you guys are <clears throat> covering, <clears throat> excuse me, covering that stuff, you know, in real time. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what we always did with our kids, and, and they they learned to trust us that we could talk to them. You know, it wasn't like, I mean, we, they knew they could come and talk to us about whatever it was because we did it 
in the moment. Mm -hmm. But I think one of the biggest differences between when we were kids and now is that there are more outside voices that the kids hear now. Yeah. When we were growing up, we had four four channels on yep. TV. That was mm -hmm. it. And then you had your friends at school. That's the only way you heard about stuff. Now they're they're being attacked. You know, those four channels had Walter Cronkite on them that just read the news and was done. Now you have endless you know uh, access to stuff and, and so there's you know there's more um, voices from the world that the kids are hearing so they're they're questioning things they're seeing things portrayed and mm -hmm. things celebrated and they're going well maybe that's maybe that's cool maybe i should do that too mm -hmm. it's scary out there talk to me no i mean think about what we're just talking about right like uh, the kids if you're gonna so what i'm watching when i i, I think about world war ii a lot hitler when i watch the world right and, and like how do you how do you get the world or how do you get a bunch of people to get on your side for something as crazy as the holocaust I mean, the holocaust is brutal i mean the things they did and people did them not even like with remorse you know but you look at what hitler did and the propaganda he started started infiltrating people's minds, great speeches. He's, he's a brilliant guy. I mean, Hitler, I mean, I know this is not something you want to say out loud, but he was brilliant. And the guy was, I mean, he had a tongue that he could say speeches that were just beautiful and got people to back him. And I mean, the, the guy, he, I mean, he was incredible, actually. Now, what he did with his skills was not incredible. I'm not saying yeah. that, right? Let's right. be very clear. Right. But if you watch what he did, and he got the propaganda out there, he dropped the pamphlets, he you know, got people thinking that way, then you get them ignorant, then you start brainwashing them as youth, and then you start getting them younger and younger and younger, and then all of a sudden they're bought into this idea of what the world's supposed to be, blonde hair, blue eyes, Aryan race. And then next thing you know, they're just decimating this population of Jewish people right. and anyone that got in the way. Yeah. And if you watch what Satan's doing, he's doing the same thing. It's right out of his Again. playbook. Yeah, I mean, he did it the first time, right? It's just right out of the playbook. You get them young, you get them dumb, you train them. I mean, I do it at work. I mean, that's how I train my staff for years. I get them young and dumb out of college so they don't know anything. I can screw them up better than anybody else, right? Mm. And then they're, they're they're just indoctrinated into that way of thinking. Not literally screw them up, but you... you no, no, but... You know you're know, training them to your ideal... Exactly. Of, right. And, yeah. and that's what every corporation does. We're trained to their particular rules and regulations and mm -hmm. what they want for productivity. Mm -hmm. So if Satan's plan is to get kids when they're young and, and you know try to indoctrinate them influence them when they're young the other part of his plan is breaking up the the nuclear family oh yeah not having not having a father in the house because as men it's, it's our natural instinct to to protect and provide mm -hmm. and if my kid comes home and he's saying stuff that he learned at school that that is not doesn't align with the word isn't true as, as a father i'm going to say that's not true dude I'm, I'm going to you know set him straight right and so i don't you know the divorce rate whatever it's over 50 percent. so there's there's the breakdown in that in the in the family and there's kids being raised by a single parent or no parent at all right so that's all part of satan's plan right mm -hmm. so i mean for those of us who i'm not going to put a man there to help steer the ship on that right i'm going to make sure he's distracted with work or this or that yep. other people other women and i'm going to take him out of the equation so yeah it's scary out there but but the good news is you have the truth mm -hmm. you've got the truth of the word and you're you're telling your boys and so they're gonna you know i believe that overcomes evil that's gonna you know the darkness flees from the light so you're giving them the truth. You're giving them the word. And yeah, they're going to hear stuff in the world. They're going to hear lies and things. But I, mm -hmm. I believe that God's word does not return void and, and that those seeds that are planted in them, you know, it's going to bear fruit. Mm -hmm. And and so, yeah, some, you know, two thirds of whatever kids walk away from the faith. But how many of them come back later? Right. So yeah. I, I don't know if they'll ever show that stat. No. And, and the, the conversation I had with a local Fellowship of Christian Athletes director, the the number that come back is getting less and less mm. and less. And he didn't give me spe specific stats on that. Mm -hmm. It's like I went away to school. I kind of went crazy for a few years. Sure. You know, and but I but deep inside I was a little convicted like, yeah, hey, I don't need to be getting doing that. And then I, I think yeah. it's it's deeply important you get the kids in the church as quick as you can. Right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and I know that for the non-Christian, they're going to say, okay, well, you guys just want to indoctrinate them early. Like, that's what they're going to say. Go. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. I mean, you're well, right. I do, actually. Like, right. So what I know is true. It's going to be one or the other. I'm going to do it or you're going to do it. Or we're going. Yeah. yeah. I'd much rather have them indoctrinated <laughs> to the ten, towards the Ten Commandments and the 613 laws and God's way of living over the world's way of living. Right. So if i got to choose one, there's not you can't say one thing in that Bible that is for our good, you know, it isn't actually for our good. Like, I mean, it just doesn't work that way. Right. So, uh, I mean, but yeah, I think you get them in early and you, and like, even the way you pray with your kids, the conversation you have with your kids, because then you're setting an example for how they'll 
I mean, we talk about it in the negative ways all the time, but we never talk about the positive ways. Like you see these families that, that the dad beats the mom while the kid grows up to beat his wife. Right. You know what I mean? Like until somebody breaks that cycle. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. You know, you talk a lot, and it was mentioned yesterday, uh, about the order of things. Mm-hmm. And do we really teach our kid about the order? And, and you know, Francis Chan uh, paints the picture in the book Crazy Love. We heard it from our pastor yesterday about – this globe was set up in a perfect spot. There's order, mm-hmm. uh, you know, mm-hmm. a few miles, a few miles closer to the sun, a few miles away from the sun, we burn up or freeze to death, and it's tilted just right. So we have the seasons, which in, which impacts our growing cycles for the food we eat and all these things. There's an order there. Mm-hmm. This is about order. It's also about the free gift of healing and grace. But there, there's an order that if we get out of line with it of that order and most time we get out of line align with things it's all internal what we do Mm -hmm. which always falls flat on its face somehow it seems like right or we you know we 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 suffer because of what this fallen state that we're born into what about the argument our truth is based on this is inerrant Mm -hmm. and that's hard for people to grasp well there's a lot of gray in there too how do we address that doesn't seem very great to me. It doesn't seem great to me either. Yeah. There's some things There's that I got to take letters. a step of I got to take a step of faith on, mm-hmm. and just realize, Lord, everything that you said in here can probably be, you know, seventy five percent can be proven physically and archaeologically. Archaeologically, but that other twenty five percent, I'm taking a step of faith. That's not a gray area. That's sure. just trusting where you're going to be and where you're going uh, through Him. You so know, I think I think we need to ask people, why do you not want that to be true? Because they don't want to change. They don't want. They don't want to give control of their life over to somebody else. Right. They want to be in control. We want to be our own god. That's that's goes way back to Satan. He wanted to be. He wanted to be the man. So we don't. You know, if this is true, then that means I have to give up my right. You know, to run my own life, I have to submit to God. And I don't want to do that. My flesh doesn't want to do that. So I would ask them, why do you not want that to be true? This is this is good news. You know what's funny is I don't feel like I changed that much. I, don't, I didn't feel like I had to give up that much, and I don't know if it's just because. Like, I know I've changed, right? Like, especially in the last four years. Like, I know I've taken changes, but, like, nothing felt hard, if that makes sense. It all felt easy. It felt good. If nothing else, I just have this, like, bigger sense of peace over the last four years, even though I've gone through rougher times in the last four years than I did the previous 36. You know what I mean? Like, I just, for for me, I I don't, that's why I don't understand that when people say that, because, like, unless, I just, I don't get it. it But but nobody really says that. They, They just they want to poke holes in the word and, and, you know, say, yeah. but, but Christianity did all it was these. written by man. Yeah. It was written by man. The crusades were bad, blah, blah, blah. They don't say, Hey, I don't, I just don't want to give up. I don't want to give up my, you know, my control of my life. Right. So they just try to, you know, poke holes in that instead. You know, what's interesting is there's been no book ever written and it's not even one book. It's how many books put together, 66. right? 66. 66. Um, that's been under more scrutiny than the Bible. And you know that every single time they've tried to prove it wrong, they found that what was in there was right, whether it was archaeological, physical, yeah. whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it. I don't know how you can deny something like that. That's like uh, the people that have tried to prove it wrong. C.S. Lewis, T.S. Eliot. They yeah. become believers. They become believers. Uh, the guy, uh, Case for Christ. Strobel. Strobel, Lee Strobel. Hmm. And, I mean, yeah. think about that guy. He was... He was way off the other side of that that chain. Yeah, yeah. And look what the Holy Spirit did, man. Plop. I'm gonna make your wife a believer. I, w- I wish more people would try to prove it wrong. I know. Yeah. Prove to me it's wrong. That that how many people? What was the? Did you send that reel about the disciples sitting around yeah. the campfire? <laughs> I got a great idea, guys. <laughs> We're going to die terrible deaths. <laughs> yeah. No problem. And. We're going to get paid? What? No, 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 no. We're going to be poor. <laughs> <laughs> that that puts it in perspective. It does. Bro. It does. It puts it in perspective. And uh, so One of 12 would have given up, just so we're on the yeah. same page. Mm-hmm. If that was not true, at least one of 12. I, I mean, I don't know that I would have gone through that at this point. Because, I mean, you know, I have because a lot of faith, but I haven't seen. If Jesus know. just died, there wouldn't be this movement. If he just died, he'd be another psycho prophet like they say he was. But he came back, and they witnessed it. Over 500 people witnessed his return. So that's where it's like, okay, every other prophet has died, and there's no other thing 
talked about them, but Christ rose from the dead. That's where our salvation lies. One of the one of the arguments that I get get sometimes is, okay, there were five hundred people that saw him ascend into heaven, right? And you got the twelve. Why was there only one, two, three, four, five, six? Why were there only six or seven guys that wrote about it? If there were five hundred people there. But you do the math, you look, and you realize the literacy rate at that time was less than 5%. Some argue it was like three could read or write. That makes sense. All of a sudden, you do the math, 500, six or seven guys writing, you're there, Mm -hmm. right? And uh, I get that a lot. Yeah, well, if it was that big a deal, there'd be a lot more people writing about that. Well, and who's to say they didn't either, by the way? And, yeah, it hadn't mean, been, the, the scrolls hadn't been found or whatever. You're didn't right. make the cut. Didn't, didn't make the cut. <laughs> it's like, well, nice try to, but... Yeah. Who, no, had, it. who had writing materials? That wasn't... It was cheap, very expensive. Yeah, very expensive. Very expensive, yeah. yeah. So all you could do was word of mouth. Yeah. And that's how the, the Christ, you know, got the word out. When we toured Jerusalem, we went to, I mean, uh, Israel, Jerusalem was part of it. We went up to, uh, it was Mount Masada, and we did the hike up there, and the story of that place is, oh my gosh, it just you just sit there and your, your your eyes are like this, and you realize what happened. And but they they in their their building there and whatever, they actually had Jewish scribes writing the Torah by hand, mm-hmm. as I guess part of their training or whatever, with a quill mm-hmm. and ink, and they're diligent and they're just sitting right over it bit by bit their 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 attention to detail is so exact and you know it it you look at this book and you go you think about we put today's standards of journalism on the ancient writers because today's standard of journalism is editorialists wanting to be the news and embellishing and putting things together I think that's one of the reasons why Jesus picked Matthew, because he was so detail oriented to the T. And you know, he, he, Matthew followed Jesus around and wrote it all out in, in such a way that you know the Bible comes to life through his eyes and what he saw. We don't give enough credit to the people that actually wrote this book and, and how articulate they were and the attention and the detail they went through. So that's just Trey's little commentary for today. But <laughs> love it. I mean, dude, our, editorially, we're in a really bad place right now. Oh, we're horrible. I mean, the, oh, even yeah. the we have AI writing, you know, articles left, right, and center, and like you know, it's so if we want to, the standard was much higher back then. Yeah. I mean, even at the, when we formed our country, I mean, the standard was much, much higher. Right. Yeah. Nobody talk. You ever read fully read the Declaration of Independence? Mm. And it's like those guys had some brains man to be able to talk like that and use the words that they used i i wouldn't even begin to be able to write something like that and then what they had to think through and write out for our constitution they were visionaries bro as far as okay it can't just be a general election it's got to be a republic where it's representative and all those things everybody thinks about america and then you just go in and, and vote and but that that's man, we've allowed corruption into our politics now and in our voting system but the way the constitution was designed was to circumvent right. that and that's and the that, same with these guys the i mean the accuracy and the holy spirit designed what was supposed to be in here for us because the holy, holy spirit knew god knew that what was going to happen in 2024 romans won yeah, you know? exactly. I was gonna say Romans. Romans one is it's heavy, right? Because it talks about wickedness and sin. Um, so it's it's heavy, but it's like we, you know, before we can come to repentance, we have to know, we have to understand that we're all, you know, we're depraved. We we have a sinful nature. We need a savior. And so um, Pastor Mark ended with you know the good news of the gospel, you know, because he said this is heavy. You know, he's like, how was church today? It was crowded, and Pastor Mark said we're all you know sinners and we we're headed for hell and all that. But, you know, he wanted to end it on a good note. So the, the last quote he had was, the, you know, the, the news of the gospel is, we are all far worse than we ever thought, but God's grace is greater than we ever imagined. So his grace covers, you know, yeah. our depravity that's described in Romans 1. What a great way to end. Yeah. It was. Great, great way to end, for sure. But great discussion. We, uh, 
and just this whole salvation story, how it applies to us as men, some of the concerns we have for our kids and what's being infiltrated on them today. Uh, I wish I could start my Monday every week like this. Fantastic. Um, really quick, circle around. What um, what we got to look forward to coming up in the coming weeks? We've got Mother's Day coming up. Going to celebrate moms. When's that again? May? Uh, second second Sunday of May. Okay. Yep. So uh, then uh, Father's Day comes back around. we got some great events with uh, the Grace for the Family Experience. We have a men's breakfast that weekend of Father's Day, June 15th. Uh, you can go to our social media pages and check out um, all that stuff happening. There's something for everybody. We had uh, an amazing turnout at our last breakfast, over 300 guys, and uh, our brother Joseph Assad brought it, man, uh, about Israel and where we stand. So we, we're going to have something very uh, a very similar uh, turnout expectation for the Father's Day event, June 15th, um, with Jason Shack from the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. He's actually going to talk a little bit about what we do, what we talked about now, because he works with the high schoolers and the junior high students all around the area, and he's got some vivid, disturbing, enlightening things that he sees on a day in and day out basis as he sees the kids interacting yeah. together. Mm-hmm. So, and he also has a lot of hope on on through Christ on on how and some great suggestions on us as men and how we approach our kids uh, in the community. So you don't want to miss that. So check that out as well. Um, but with that said, we're going to circle up, tie a bow on this one. We're going to catch everybody next week. So uh, check out all of our events. Like, copy, like, copy. Like, share, follow Subscribe, us. Yeah. Do all those things that don't cost a dime. But if you do decide you want to help partner with us, just go to our website, impactministries.org, with the M-P-A-C-T, ministries.org. We promise that we will battle Satan with uh, every little partner we have that, that helps us bring this message of grace uh, in our community and throughout our country. So with that said, we'll catch you next time. I'm Trey. I'm Michael. I'm Brad. I'm Jeremy. We are the Boston Christians. Christians. Let's go. It's way better than last week. Yeah, we were a little disjointed last week. <laughs> yeah. We got to get the video of you dancing. Yeah, dude. We got him dancing. I don't even know where they're at. Let's go. We got to get we you on board. I really don't know where they're at. Like, I, I have no idea. Really? Mm-hmm. Maybe the, the, the archives, the Kentucky archives, there's got to be, I'm sure there's some, some video some, somewhere. Some, that's true. Dance there was archives. no iPhones back then. There was no iPhone. It was all VHS. Yeah.